volunteer to help them to access to the information and communication. Uh, let me introduce a little bit uh, the Read for the Blind project. Consequently, the Read for the Blind project in Thailand becomes a, success, a successful model with more than uh, uh, 120,000 engagement of the target who have difficulties in Thailand. And before we move into the presentation, let me take a little bit more time just to introduce ourselves, who we are. ETDA is uh, Electronic Transaction Development, as I mentioned. It is a public organization on behalf of Ministry of Digital Economy and Society. And you, we have the main responsibility to, you know, to promote uh, e-commerce, e-trade e uh, facilitation, soft infrastructure, and you know, some kind uh, like a digital economy laws, e-standard and cyber security, etc., etc. Et and anyway, one mission that we aim is to collaborate and to empower with the multi-stakeholder, both the national level and international level, uh, to raise awareness of the internet governance in the target group of Thailand as well. So uh, we have main key topic that we would like to contribute in this workshop. Uh, first of all, our guest speaker, we have two speakers to join the forum today. And uh, the guest speaker will introduce you to, uh, about Read for the Blind project, which is a mobile application, uh, a cloud-based audio book, uh, or we can call it, it is a creation for the blinds. And the secondly, we will move to you know, the introduction of Help Us Read, which is a Facebook group and instant social assistant for the blinds in Thailand. And then we move to the live demonstration, and then you can you know, enjoy how it's functional and practical application that some of you here would have some idea to pick it up and be applied into your environment in your country. And last, at the last section, we're going to have a question and answer among you know, a friends uh, of IGF. Then we can uh, bring all together in the future collaboration for the sustainable development because we don't want to you know, have a, a good talk in this room. The aim is how we can extend um, a Read for the Blind project to another neighbor country or you know, another IGF friend uh, env environment. Uh, let me introduce our honor speaker. Start with the lady first. I just would like to give uh, the floor to, uh, let me see, Miss Cholatip Yim Yong. Hello. <laughs> she can, yes, go on to introduce Hello. yourself to yes. your friends. Hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Cholatip Yim Yong from National Library for the Blind and Blind Disabled uh, of Thailand Association for the Blind Foundation. Yeah, uh, our colleagues, uh, Miss Miss Cholatip Yim Yong, uh, even she has a difficulty with the blind since she was young, but she's so excellent because she got a bachelor degree in computer science, and recently she works as a co-founder of Read for the Blind in Thailand, and also he worked as a post of head administrator, administrator supporting electronic content services at the National Library for the Blind and Printers Disabled in Thailand. So let's move to the gentleman, our guest speaker. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Natawood uh, Amon, uh, Amon Biwat. Right now, Mr. Natawood is a co-founder of Read for the Blind and Help Us Read Project. And he also get a, a hold the post of CEO at the Focal Intelligence, which is a mobile application development company in Thailand. Uh, so I think that 
it is the time to pass the floor to, you know, to our key speaker to contribute the functional and application uh, technology which helped our friends. Uh, may I pass my duty to you? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I like to, we like to cover um, our personal stories of our team in Thailand developed two systems to help the blind. Um, the, the, the team is multi-stakeholder. Um, it was started uh, PO private, but we work with NGO, for example, and we work with PO private. Um, the key stakeholder is the Library for the Blind and um, corporations. Um, I myself am, come from pri PO private sector, but we know that technologies can help solving some of the problems. Um, the two, the two stories we're going to talk about today is called, one is Read for the Blind mobile application, which is basically a cloud-based audio book creation for the blind. Another one is called Help Us Read Facebook group, which is the instant social help for the blind. So if you can match, if you could take a few f uh, seconds, imagine yourself as a blind person, or if you, you want to close your eyes, if you drop something down the table, right, it's so easy for us. We just open our eyes, try to find it. For the blind person, the books that they need to, to read, to study, the works that they need to perform to earn themselves money, to, to um, raise their kids, and even to, to you know, contribute to the society, it's very difficult. They cannot, um, they cannot see. And looking at this, um, this, this uh, slide, Kunchola Tip, a blind mother, she has two kids, right? Um, this Mother's Day, her kids draw her a, a Mother's, Mother's Day card, give it to her and said, I love you. And she asked, what is this picture, right? What, what did you draw? The young kid, uh, she's so shy and she just, you know, she wouldn't explain it. How can Kun Cholatip, how can Miss Cholatip understand fully, to appreciate it fully, what, what, what's the love that uh, her kid give her? Today, we would like to tell you um, that we can use social network to help the blinds to be able to understand the situation. Our story starts about four years ago. In Thailand, right, very few become volunteers in terms of audiobook creation, myself included. I always thought I want to record books for the blind. Never do it. I never done it before because I never know where this place is. I never go to library for the blind. It's very difficult to go, right? Um, but one day I decided to go and I go there. There's, um, in the room, there's a few PCs with a software that require about one and a half hours of training, right? Once I'm done, um, I ask, what is the most re demanded book right now? The staff uh, gave me this civil law, <laughs> two inch thick, right? And said, in three days, a blind, blind student needs to take the examination and no one has come to read it for her yet. Three days, and this civil law book, right? So I spent three hours that day, the remaining of the day, reading. I went through just two chapters out of maybe 20 chapters. And we know that black kid would never got at this book to study before final exam, never, right? But as an engineer, we know that the most, the easiest and the best recording devices in everyone's, everybody's hand, right? It's mobile phone. If we can have an app that can record the audio book, we can do it anywhere, anytime, right? And the thick book like this, if they have 20 chapters, 20 friends can do one chapter each, and we could finish this book in a night, right? So I tell that to the library, and uh, we spend like three, three months afterward talking with the uh, um, library for the blind, thinking about the features. In the end, we managed to engage uh, Google Thailand and Samsung Thailand to combine our effort to produce an app called Read for the Blind Application. Eight months later, we launched this app, right? This is about three years already. We launched the app. The app is basic. It's basically a, a, a microphone, a recorder. But the key, the key thing is that it cannot be just normal recorder because you will definitely make, make a mistake, right? When you pr read the book, you will misread it. You will misspelling it. 
Um, so the app, you can, you can scroll it, rewind it back to the point where you made a mistake, and then you, you, know, you just record it again, right, in the middle of it. And the second key function is that once you're done with the voice recording, with the chapters, you upload it into the cloud. And the blind, this app can be accessed by the blind using accessibility function. The blind can read, can, can, we, we use the word read, right? It's, we, they can re listen to the audio book immediately, right? So on the blind person side, we have a specific uh, blind person's logins, right? So they can identify themselves as the blinds so that the, we um, sort of comply with the copyright law. So the blind log in and they can scroll through the books or the articles, listen to it. So basically it's collaboration. This technology is basically a bridge between volunteers and the blinds. It's a hybrid between human and technologies in terms of helping the blind, right? So um, volunteers read books, collaborate, or help, instant help. And on the blind person's side, they can read books, they can comment. We know that volunteers get high you know, moral boost because they get comments back from the blind to say thank you, to say to comment. They know a number of blind persons listen to their books. That is very important in, from, from our experience. Um, and this we create a, a, an engaged uh, system, social system. Once we're done with this, we launch it publicly. Um, and this is quite important. Um, when we launch something, we need to really engage public. We use uh, a lot of people, celebrities, university students, recording books for their peers, um, start recording. And um, this is, you know, went um, with a lot of challenge. The first one, copyright law. Right? After we launched about three years ago, um, the, one of the biggest uh, publishing house called us up right, and said they are very concerned about this. And I asked them, okay, um, Library for the Blind has been doing it for the last 30 years. Why now? And they said, because it's so inconvenient. It has been very in inconvenient. So there are very few books, very few volunteers. Now that we launch it in the mobile application, there will be a lot more help. And they're now concerned. I totally understand them, right? We totally understand them. But we thought the, the app's not going to be that easy anymore, right? So um, we bring a lot of books down. We create this login for the blind persons. And um, so, but lucky for us, uh, one year afterward, a new law, copyright law in Thailand passed. And it said, if you do a copy of the inaccessible content, for the blind, it, you are exempt from copyright. So it, it, it basically, I think a lot of countries has that law at the moment. So I think a lot of people can do pretty much the same thing. And um, the app uh, ecosystem is run by the, uh, the blind foundation, which is very important as well. It has to be run by the blind foundation. Second one, the voice quality. People would ask, if the microphone connect with USB to the PC, is it better than uh, the voice you recorded on a mobile phone? And you know, as an engineer on mobile phone, we know that the quality of the voice from mobile phone is very good because of the noise reduction. It's you know, $100 billion industry, right? The, the quality con uh, of the voice is very good. But what we cannot control is that once we have 120,000 volunteers recording from their home, from their workplace, we cannot control the, the, the background, right? So we urge um, the blind association that give us a chance. Um, you have very few books in the past. Let it be a high quality book. But for us, let us create a wide variety of books for the blind. Articles, something the blind never got before, but more like a medium range quality, right? So we passed that, um, we gone through that issue. The next issue comes up because of our own system. Once it's very convenient, there are much more volunteers, 120,000 in fact. And um, number of workload of quality control at the Bly Library has been, they were overwhelmed by this number of books, audio books. What we changed is that in version two, which we launched last year, it become a cloud-based 
system like YouTube. So when you record the audio book, um, the book that has been listened to most and has been read at most, highest score, will come up in the ranking. And when the blind comes in, they only see the high ranking books. So it's more like a self-scoring kind of system. So we sort of, sort of lift some of the quality control workload out from the library itself. So three years after launch until today, we have 120,000 voice volunteers in Thailand. The number of books before Read for the Blind was 5,000 nationwide before. After Read for the Blind, we have 18,000 more books from Read for the Blind. And the ecosystem of this, uh, of this uh, application is very important. I need to show you this. Um, on the top part, we, um, we have the volunteers. They read into the cloud. And from the cloud, the, the, um, the blind person can log in and they can extract the, vo the, the, the audio books. But not only this, many blind people in Thailand do not have smartphone, right? Um, and we have to treat everyone equal. Um, in the blind foundation, they would select the highest quality books from this system, bring it from one cloud to another cloud. And this second cloud will serve different channels. The first one is the not typical dial-in. It's called 1414. You dial in 1414, you can listen using landline, you can listen using feature phone. Second one is TAB Radio, it's Thailand Association for the Blind Internet Radio. And another one is another mobile uh, application, it's called TAB Tap to Read. So basically this to show that we need to have several channels in order for the grassroots uh, section people as, as well as the, the, the people who have smartphone in order to participate in this. And the key things to make it work is that it's run by association of the blind so that the participation from, from the blind, is, it's, um, it, it can be uh, work, worked out. Um, so basically, uh, what we have changed is, first of all, um, we can manage to, we manage to get people to contribute audio book from anywhere, anytime. And secondly, they can collaborate. The big, thick book, they can do it in one night, for example. Do we have uh, Thai people from, from Scandinavia, from uh, Germany, from Australia? They have been contributing their voice to buy people in Thailand collaborating uh, with one book. That's, that is read for the blind. Another function, another system that we want to talk about today is called Facebook group. And I hope very much that if you like this, this idea, maybe you like to, to try to do it uh, in other country as well. And we would love to, to help out. We would love to do it as well. One night, um, Kun Chola Thip, he sent, she sent me a, a JPEG file, a picture file. She said she cannot read the picture, right, for sure. And, uh, the picture is from the school of her kid. It's a timetable of the, it's a, a study schedule. And if the school were to send her a text file, she'd be able to understand it using a voiceover function. But the school sent her a, a picture file. I read it for her, but I asked her, wouldn't it be nice if we have one, more than a thousand volunteers standing by to read her a photo, right? And she said, black people can use Facebook very, very fluently, right? Actually, in fact, she typed much better than I do, much faster than I, than I, than I type. Um, so we tried. We tried immediately. Um, we were in front of the room. Um, as a blind person, we take a photo of the, the sign in front of the door, which said, please wash hands before and after we sit in, this is in a hospital. Take a photo, upload into Help Us Read Facebook group, the volunteers in the Facebook group, they will see, the, the blind, they will see this, um, this photo. Basically, what the volunteers need to do is just basically to type a comment explaining that, fo that uh, photo. So in this case, the volunteer will say, please wash hands before and after visiting. Exactly this, right? Now, as the, the one who posts the picture, you will get notification when someone comments on your, on your post, right? So, um, she goes in, look at the comment, uh, use the voiceover, listen to the comment. Now she can understand the photo. 
If you're not clear, that much clear, we have a videotape of this. So let's see. So this, this uh, video, video clips will, um, will show how the blind person capture the photo and put it on the uh, Facebook. Camera. Camera. Flash. Automatic. Switch. Take picture. Button. Camera. Doc. Page two of three. Page three of tab rate. End of Insta Google Maps. Future. Google Maps. Utilities from WhatsApp. Videos. Facebook. Line. Facebook. Notifications. One new. More. Button. Back. Button. Search. Button. Public group middle dot 8400. Public selected. Add members. Search. She use her but finger info. to brush it. Write something. To Ellipsis. Write something. The button. Her. Geometry. Privacy. Remove location. Write something. Photo slash video. Button. Photo slash camera roll. Done. Open camera. Photo. Just now. Image. Selected. Open. Done. Button. Done. Photo. Say something about this photo. Ellipsis. Say something about this photo. Cab E. Cab W. Cab W. F. D. F. G. H. H. A. R. T. T. Space. I. D. S. Space. B. U. Y. T. T. G. H. H. I. Type very fast. D. S. What is this? S. Photo. What is Remove locate. Add album. Privacy. Geometry view my Post. Button. Post. Yeah, she posted to the group, right? So we have 8, 000, more than 8,000 volunteers standing by in the group, 24 hours. Once she posted, it, the volunteers see it, explain it in the comment. Now she get the comment back. She, she see the notification that there's someone commenting on her photo. And now she's going to attempt to read, to read that comment. What is this? Photo. No automatic all text available. I asked her to Image, like, the speed button, the voice comment, screen. button, share, but be the first person. Sai, Commented, a book topic of working together for health. Six minutes ago, zero likes. Two, Natwood Amon Vivid commented, a book named Working Together for Health. The book has a gray cover with graphics of men and women. On the cover, it says in two volumes. Vol 1 inches and large type edition. Just now, zero likes. Two finger double tap to interact with this network alert. So basically, that's, that's how we, we, we use the uh, social network, network system to, to help you know, people to understand. In fact, um, last night, I think Kun Chua Tip, uh, the room is getting very cold, and she took a photo of the, the thermostat and asked, you know, what, what is the temperature now? So she can change it up or down according to the current uh, model. And it's 24 hours help in real time, right? So, so right now we have um, 8,400 volunteers in this. And the example of, of, of the help that we did give, give is, the, for example, this um, timetable in the school that even if the, even at the school that allow the blind person in Thailand to, to, to study with their peers, like, you know. Um, but they still send out the um, timetable in JPEG, right? And uh, it's not accessible. So someone posted it on the group and the group explained it. And this photo, I take a photo of the milk carton and ask what is the expiry date, right? The drug, is this paracetamol? Go to the hospital, come back, get confused which uh, drug is which. We don't have an accessible level in Thailand. What impressed me a lot is the lecture that blind students can study lecture that their peers lend them. Right? In fact, in the, in the bachelor degree, a law student um, help um, their friends um, using this group, you know, 8,000, more than 8,000 volunteers, Thai 15 years old, 15 years of exams, all exams, finished in one month. So the next, gen gen next generation of blind person can have material to study. But I'm an engineer, and a lot of my friends are, and we ask, why don't we automate all this? But what we learn, and I never expect this when we launched this, is this example. 
the emotion side of things, right? The art, artistic side. Today's technologies cannot do it. Um, the volunteers help explaining the motivation behind the drawing, the color, the children used in the drawing, the, um, um, the meanings of the picture. These kind of things make us aware that actually the hybrid system between human and connecting technology still very valuable, right? It's a bridge that we need to, to use, but we cannot ignore the human side of things. And this, I think, it, it makes, it, it solves one key thing. We not just solve the inaccessible content issues, but we solve the awareness. Because once people get to give, they, they start to become aware of what the blinds can do, right? I, I want to leave you with um, uh, some um, uh, video that we can see. Good, my pen, like, who are they? 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 ผมต้องทำความฝันของผมให้สำเร็จผมอยากเป็นอาจารย์สอนในมหาวิทยาลัยผมต้องอ่านหนังสือแต่ห้องสมุดของผมมันมืดไปหมดเพราะว่าผมตาบอดผมรู้ว่าสิ่งที่อยู่ในมือมันคือหนังสือแต่ผมไม่รู้เลยว่าจะอ่านมันยังไงมีอะไรช่วยไหมคะพี่เพราะเสียงนี้ที่ทำให้ผมพบกับแสงสว่างนับจากวันนั้นหนังสือทุกเล่มที่ผมอยากอ่านผมได้อ่านผ่านจากดวงตาของจูนและของเพื่อนๆทุกคนคุณเสียงในวันนั้นที่ทำให้ผมมีแสงสว่างในวันนี้จูนเป็นแค่ผู้หญิงธรรมดาคนหนึ่งไม่ได้สำคัญอะไรและไม่เคยคิดมาก่อนเลยว่าจากจุดเริ่มต้นเล็กๆแค่การอ่านหนังสือแบบนี้จะทำให้ชีวิตจูนพบแสงสว่างและเปลี่ยนชีวิตจูนให้ทำเพื่อคนอื่นต่อไปเพราะความดีที่เราทำมันไม่เพียงแค่เปลี่ยนชีวิตของผู้อื่นแต่มันเปลี่ยนชีวิตของเราตลอดไปสุดท้ายในที่สุด what what we have learned is that when we engage uh, public in terms of make this this um, help Or campaign successful is also uh, we actually creating a tools not just to help the blind but we help uh, volunteers normal you know everyone to have the tools to give and that is what we found is very important and the technology is the, the bridge between between uh, it's the bridge and it's in very inclusive it combines the blind and and everyone into one one society and that Basically, what we learn, you know, what um, how to make this campaign uh, works for us. Okay, so that that is that is the what we want to say, uh, and we're very open to ideas, discussion, different settings in different countries. And um, apologize, we we do not have a live demo, 
but we, we do have some video in, in, in the presentation already. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, hello, uh, thank you very much uh, for the presentation. Uh, I'm from Myanmar, uh, your neighbor. <laughs> so um, we are also um, uh, doing some ICT accessibility for person with disabilities in Myanmar. We are starting to do that as well. And um, and I wanted to ask, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, the, the app and also the idea of the ecosystem is also very interesting. I just wanted to ask about the app and is it the, the readings, are, are they according to the DAISY standards that you are working on and about the phone 1414, is it a toll free number? เขาถามเรื่องเดซี่สแตนดาร์ดใช่มั้ยเขาถามเรื่องเดซี่สแตนดาร์ดใช่มั้ยคือตัวเอาเอาทรานส์เลตอ่ะเหรอเอ่อระ
Um, the second thing, um, yeah, I think, I think you, you made me think about Facebook again. Um, uh, people can listen, I mean, volunteers can help listen to things and type it as a text. And social media is wonderful for that. So we can also do it. When, when we start uh, to help us read, we, we, we have two person. One is the controller tip and the other is myself. I sent it to my friends, like 200 people. She sent it to blind person friends, 200 people, and it spread. So why not? Let's, let's, let's see if it works uh, for the deaf uh, people as well. Or maybe the blind, blind people in, in, in your country, because I think more it should be maybe one language uh, per platform. It's probably easier for everyone. But I would love to see this being used as well. Yeah. Okay, and there are some applications that uh, can, can translate uh, sound in, uh, in, into text, right? right. Yeah. Let me go back to the Bhutanese friend a little bit more. Yeah, uh, we think that we more than happy, you know, to work with you more closely in, you know, uh, establish this new application to your country because one of those, you are the journalist from the uh, media industry and the other guys from Bhutan is come from ICT, Ministry of ICT, right? Yeah, we can have some more time in the future how we can help each other set, uh, set up uh, set up like a capacity building and contribute more, you know, the public education, what this technology will benefit to the community. In the future, we can work more together. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jerry Ellis and I'm from Dublin in Ireland. I found your demonstrations and your apps very interesting. Um, the second app you showed sounds very similar to one which I think is based in America called Be My Eyes, where somebody takes a picture or a video and sends it off to a volunteer who describes it. So it might be worth your while linking in with Be My Eyes and maybe help each other to standardize it or improve it or, or you know what I mean so you learn from each other the other thing that I thought might be of interest was if you have volunteers reading books some are very good some are very bad some maybe don't understand that they have to turn off the air conditioning because the because it interferes with the sound so I'm wondering do you have a set of, of, uh, of rules or regulations or recommendations that you give to readers to ensure that the standards of the books uh, are as high a quality as they can be. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, excellent uh, point. Um, the, the quality is big, big uh, topics and, and big uh, points. We, we do it uh, through, we, apart from the apps, we have the Facebook page of the Read for the Blind where people can engage. And in that Facebook page, we have a video clips of the instructions or tips and um, basically talking about this, you know, how to uh, record the best voice quality as possible. Um, we also do um, a, a engagement, in, uh, do a, like a group-based kind of training as well. We do it for corporations, big corporations. They want to do a CSR uh, projects doing based on read for the blind we go there and we teach them how to how to do it and particularly on the quality of their voice we have voice trainer going with us as well and this is will help the volunteers not just for read for the blind but in their professional life as well right how to pronounce uh, words correctly things like that so yes yes we, we try to do that as much as possible but it's not it, it's, it's far from perfect. It, in the end, there will always be some, some low quality uh, books or articles created, but you know, you sort of, you try to manage it. Yes. 
คือคือก็อย่างที่บอกของเราจะมีการให้อ่านเป็นประเภทบทความก่อนเนี่ยเพื่อที่จะได้เพื่อที่พี่จะได้แบบว่าทดสอบเสียงก่อนก่อนที่จะมั่นใจแล้วก็ไปอ่านหนังสือเล่มจริงๆ Yes คุณโชติ point out very important point that we did is that um, when we start off with uh, someone who is totally new to the system we ask them to do uh, record articles first We we have two two fun, uh, two areas in in the apps. One is article, which is like one chapter and done, right? Another one is book, which has multiple chapter. We ask them to do just just article because it's, it's precise, like short is done, right? So. Laga, the water bottle of the application, really, that we built. Huh? The water bottle of the application that we built, really, that we built, really, that we built. อีกหนึ่งทางเลือกให้กับอาสาสมัครในการที่จะอ่านหนังสือได้ง่ายๆเพราะว่าจริงๆแล้วในตัวห้องสมุดเองเนี่ยเราจะมีโปรแกรมที่อยู่บน PC ในการบันทึกอยู่แล้วซึ่งจะเน้นคุณภาพมากแต่ว่าตัวแอปก็คือเป็นเป็นอีกหนึ่งทูที่ให้อาสาสมัครเลือกใช้อะ Right and um, the key thing is that uh, the app is just one of the alternative ways to record there's still traditional uh, PC based High quality studio, um, you know, recording that's available. Yes, but very, very important point you point out. Yes. Yes. Hello. So my name is Khalid. I'm from Jordan, Amman. I was wondering if you're more inclusive of other languages than English or Thai. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, that that is the point. When we launched this, the first question coming in from I think Thai people in, well, in, in Australia, uh, she has a kid studying in Australia, basically speaking English, and she asked if she can do English version, PO English books. Yes, there are a lot of English books in the system right now, but still, right now it's purely based on Thai, Thai um, settings. So the book can be English, can be any language, um, but, but um, as the previous question, Um, the ecosystem is run purely based on Thailand setting. Um, we can replicate it, but um, in order for it to work, it has to be done not just the apps, but the the the, the, the organizational aspect of this. Yeah, is that uh, correct? I answer correctly. Okay. Will it be accessible for people to use it? I mean, will it be easy for people of other languages to use the app? Um, I think if we want to replicate in other countries, we, we, we need to totally revamp this, change the menu and, and stuff. But um, yes, it should not require a lot of time. Okay, yes. thank you. I, I mean, we would love to, to work together Okay. that. Great. Thank you. The next question is come from uh, the question from colleagues from Australia. Yeah. May I move? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, my question is um, a non-technical one. Um, you mentioned, um, you introduced um, the electronic transaction unit of the ministry. Um, and I was just wondering how the government is involved in this project, how much it is supporting it, and, uh, and, and that relationship. Thank you. Uh, actually, let me uh, contribute some, you know, perception from my side on behalf of uh, government agency under the Ministry of Digital Economy and Society. Yes, right now, since the Thai government uh, have the policy to move forward, uh, driving the digital economy to the society in Thailand. One of important things is all about the internet governance and you know, uh, promote the accessibility for the friends for the disability is one under the umbrella of in, uh, internet governance. Uh, on the role of government agency, we have the aim and mission to drive uh, the good job, the collaboration with the private sector and you know, public sector like our friend from the uh, Rich for the Blind project. 
just to support, promote, enhancing the project to, you know, to another communities in a practical way. But anyway, uh, here there is a representative from ECDA, Mr. Wanawit. We are, he is here in this forum. He represents ECDA and he also works as a um, multi stakeholder advisor at the IGF as well. Could you pass this question to Kun Wanawit? You would have some idea to contribute how Thai government can support this kind of you know, useful contribution. Thank you. Yes, I think. The speaker have been mentions about the the keywords of hybrids. From what we're looking at, I think there are two major separate issues here we're talking. I think the IT part, we have no worry on the interoperable or interoperabilities of it. It's just a matter you need to find a stakeholder in other country to work. What we're looking at here in terms of IT is that how could we expand it and become a community based driven that they can do even at the regional level for them to sustain so if two or three more country collaborate together then I think government will it's easier for, for discussing and get the support from the government they are already self funded today but uh, from ETDA perspective, we look into how to, could we create uh, uh, the cross-country implementation, especially uh, a lot of people share the same language, English, Chinese, and how all these is shared together, that's the most important thing in terms of IT. Uh, secondly, I think what, what we're looking at as a unique in this is this is the first time we hear the technologies that that link between the people and technologies to support. So uh, especially we, maybe because our groups of language we call complex grammar structures is hopeless to use the machine translation. Google is giving up. They don't do the translation in Thai anymore. And I think it will be the same too for CLMB and the other country around in Cambodia, in Burma. The only way is how to bring the, the network of the, the good people or good Samaritan people that like to do good things every day, easy access. And that's what we're looking at. That, that's why we bring them here. We sponsor the trips and think that they can expand this. And I think the network of the people is very important. Uh, last point I'd like to mention is that this technology is not only for the blind. If you look into the futures, what it can use, it can even help the tourism when they're getting lost. If the whole network of the people, it's standby to help. So how we utilize that, it can use for the patient that cannot read and stay in the bed. I think I heard a lot of story about the religious book that they can listen. It's so the technology itself, after it's expand, it's not limited to the accessibility, it's only limit to the blind, but that's that how the government see that we like to see the collaborations in this. And we're picking up this project because it has been presented in local IGF in Thailand. And next year we host the Asia Pacific IGF. We do believe that we try to, to create some more concrete action that how could we collaborate together among countries and then see who will be participate in the ecosystem. I have to admit the fact that the accessibility is overlooked in several uh, aspects, in several floors. I also work in ICANN and I try to bring this issue in. Thank you. Uh, to follow up on, on your point, um, I, we really love to work with other countries if you, you find this um, kind of framework or system interesting, um, I mean, our, if we see it happen um, in other countries as well, we will, we'll, we'll be very, very happy. And we will very uh, support, we'll be very supportive to that. Um, okay. 
Yeah, the time is gone now. Uh, at last, last but not least, let me thank you to all, participa uh, all participants, you know, to attend this forum. And we're looking forward to, you know, working more closely with our IGF friends to continue this kind of, you know, technology, digital technology that's bridge uh, the relations between uh, volunteer and the blind people. And, you know, if you have some more questions, please feel free, you know, to keep in touch through the email. Uh, our key speaker, Mr. Nacho, will just leave the email address as a focal point contact. And looking forward to welcome IGF friend to Thailand in the next year coming. And we sure that we will have the good collaboration in this near future. Thank you for your participation. Good luck. <laughs>